Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about one of the things that farmers are very interested in every year, and that is herbicide breakdown so they don't have what we call carryover into the next crop, or in other words, damage from last year's herbicides to this year's crop. I think it's pretty interesting. You know, one of the things that farmers like about the winter workshops that we put on is just seeing this big spreadsheet that we put together with all kinds of different crops and all kinds of different herbicides they may use for weed control and then how many months you have to wait from using one herbicide before you can plant a certain crop. Like Flexstar for example is a real popular herbicide that can control pigweed post-emergent soybeans. That's great because we don't have very many options for pigweed control in soybeans but the problem with Flexstar is you've got a 10 month rotational restriction to corn. So for farmers they're thinking, all right, it's borderline here. It's already June, and I still need to spray this Flexstar to kill the pigweed, but that means I can't plant corn until at least April next year. Wow, I'm cutting it kind of close. What factors will help that Flexstar break down so I know for sure I don't have any worries next year for my corn? Okay, if you're a non-farmer, you may be thinking, ooh, we've got these harmful pesticides that are out there for a long time. Look, what farmers are applying is just tiny amounts of herbicide, really, on a per acre basis. The amount that ends up in a square foot of soil is very, very minimal. And it's actually probably not going to kill a whole lot going into this year, even if there is some that's left over into this year. What we're looking at, though, is even a little bit of crop damage. We start talking all the time on the show here about big time yields. 200, 300 bushel corn, 60, 90 bushel soybeans, 100, 150 bushel wheat. Well, you can't achieve those kind of huge yield levels unless everything is perfect. It's very easy to ding up your crop by two bushels or five bushels with just a little bit of last year's herbicide left over into this year. So here are the factors that we look at as farmers. It really comes down to heat, moisture, soil type, and even soil pH. So if we're on the plus side on all those things, we're in great shape. If we're on the minus side, it's not a good deal. So what we're talking about is if we have more heat, we have faster breakdown. And the reason why we have more heat and faster breakdown is it's the soil microbes that get going. So for example, for us in the wintertime, we have four, five, six months that are just ridiculously cold. There's nothing happening in the soil. The soil microbes, they can't even function, it's so cold. But if you're in the southern United States, there might only be a month or two that's that cold. So there's just that many more months that you can get herbicide breakdown. Well, the other thing, uh, and it was the last one that you mentioned there, Brian, is soil pH. And when I think about soil microbes, their work is gonna be done 24 hours a day, 365 days a year unless your soil is frozen. So if we can get those soil microbes working at their maximum, we're gonna break down herbicides and other things very quickly. So soil pH comes into play. If you get a very low soil pH and the soil is very acid, you're gonna have a tough time, especially for bacterial survival in very low pHs. On the other side, if you have a very high pH, fungi have a tough time surviving. So you need something in the middle, somewhere around neutral to maybe slightly acid. That's where you're gonna see bacterial activity and fungal activity maximized. On all the pesticide labels, they will have the amount of time that you need to wait until you rotate to a certain crop. But what we always tell people is, if you've got all these factors stacked against you, so for example, let's say you farm in North Dakota so you're cold. You farm in Western North Dakota so you're dry. You have not very good soil conditions. You know what? Maybe you just add an extra year onto whatever that rotational restriction says on the label. We just have to make sure that if we're going for really good yield, we're very careful about the herbicides we used the previous year and maybe even the year before that depending on the herbicide and the crop we want to rotate to. All right so we're talking about all the next year kind of things. Let's talk about the this year things. For farmers they want these herbicides that they're putting out to kill weeds now so they can maximize crop growth. And when farmers put herbicides out in the fall before they seed a spring crop, they know there's gonna be some breakdown because the soil microbes are still working right up until the point that that soil freezes. So there's going to be some breakdown of that herbicide and also weeds are gonna take some of that herbicide up and try to break that down as well. So when we put on herbicides in the fall, we know, hey, we've gotta get out there early in the spring and plant so 
we get an early crop canopy so we still have good weed control. Now the other side of that is spring applied herbicides. Farmers are going to try to put products out before they plant that can kill weeds as they're starting to germinate in the ground so the weeds don't actually grow and compete against the crop. And when we put out those residual herbicides, chances are they've got about a good month or so of killing residual. So we've got to get in the next month, we've got to get the crop up and canopying that ground so when that herbicide is finally broken down, now the crop is able to shade the ground out and stop weeds from coming on its own. Well, once again, herbicide breakdown is an important thing that farmers need to understand, as is weed control, especially if farmers have our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 